for those of you who were here the last section, session that didn't project for a while there, so that's my paranoia. Um, I'm Judith Parker. I teach at Muhlenberg College, which for those of you who are particularly out of Pennsylvania, is about an hour north of here. Um, and just to give you, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of a context here, um, Muhlenberg College is, is a small liberal arts college. By small, I mean under 2,000. Um, the course that I'm talking about here actually, first of all, is part of the physics department. And where that might seem kind of silly to some of you, I often get students who, by the end of the semester, come up and say, oh, this was such a great course. I never, ever take a physics course. And I go, did, did you notice when you registered, you know, it was like a PHY in front of those numbers that you registered for? You just successfully took a physics course. So um, we do a little bit of physics. How many people, anybody teach astronomy here? Yeah, okay. We do some optics, we do some mechanics in there, and then we delve into the solar system and galaxies and stars and so on and so forth. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of everything, but the idea is to give them this very comprehensive view of astronomy. These are mostly, um, most of the people take it for their science credit. For the most part, um, I didn't have any science majors in there. They revised the curriculum needs a couple of years ago, and so occasionally I'll get another science, uh, science person in there. And the idea was it didn't count if they were a science major. They didn't need a science credit, and so that kind of kept them out. Um, just to give you a little bit of context in terms of where Muhlenberg was coming, with, coming in terms of technology, um, I think oftentimes we have this idea that you know, our institution is truly the last one to jump on board. And um, it really wasn't actually until about 2012 that the college president convened a task force to research and make recommendations to guide the college's approach to blended and online learning. Now, just a little bit of personal background. I teach part-time at Muhlenberg, but I also teach an online course for the American Museum of Natural History in New York. I teach the same course online and on campus, graduate courses at Teachers College at Columbia University. And so I've had all this experience that I've been just kind of dying to do something with astronomy. And so I've been at Muhlenberg since 2001. Finally, 2012, okay? We at least had a task force. So this was kind of a big thing. One year later, they decided that the task force came up with a recommendation to develop a small number of high quality blended and online courses. And from what I've done and what I told you, and I also had spent a lot of time in industry working for 3M Company in Minnesota. And in the 90s, we were doing essentially hybrid courses with uh, technical center leaders throughout the world, um, doing some things with on campus at, at national, international conferences we had, and then a lot of online stuff as well. So I was really anxious to kind of get the blended learning going. It was my own personal favorite. So we were going to develop a few of these things. We weren't going to jump in. We were going to provide support for faculty to integrate digital tools and pedagogies into their courses. And so by about a year later, the end of the academic year 2013-14, the college was ready to offer its first hybrid course. I did enough politicking and said, but I've been doing this for ages and ages and ages. They said, oh, sure, go ahead and do it. So the provost decided that I could do the first hybrid course last summer, uh, repeating it again this summer. And the interesting thing was from personal experience, this was actually the first course. The other courses I had taught were either in industry or they were graduate courses. This was my own learning experience in terms of undergrad. So I was kind of anxious to see how that would go. The other thing was that this was the only course, we've got like four or five online or hybrid courses going this summer. This was the only course last summer. And everyone was paranoid about a few things. One of them was keeping it as much like the on-campus class as possible. So these are the course goals. They're the same course goals that I've taught for 14 years in my on-campus class. You know, to be able to experience, understand, demonstrate, the process of scientific discovery and experimentation in the field of astronomy through simulation labs and observational activities. 
And these were key because I make students go out the star chart and actually look at the sky and highlight what they're seeing and write me some things about it. But I also used some labs that I'll talk about in just a couple of minutes as well that were actually that were actually produced at Gettysburg College, not all that far from here. Um, about two decades ago, actually, they got a National Science Foundation grant, but they're simulations of the kinds of research that astronomers would do. And these are the things I use in my classroom. So part of my trick here was to figure out how to make this work with students who would not be on campus. I wanted them to understand the basic structure and motions of our solar system, galaxy, universe, as well as basic physics principles that govern them be able to communicate ideas about our solar system, our galaxy, and our universe clearly and cogently, be able to locate, analyze, evaluate, and share information about current discoveries. So I'm always bringing in things uh, about what's going on. Uh, you know, we'll have data on Pluto and information this summer. We had the um, uh, asteroid um, research last fall. So there's always something going on. And to me, personally, because these are non-science majors, the bottom bullet point on here is, to me, the most important, that they cultivate a curiosity. This is something that they can take with them and just use. Just an anecdote, a couple of years ago, I was at a meeting um, that had nothing to do with science, and I'm walking out the door, and somebody's yelling, Dr. Parker, Dr. Parker. And I turned around, and this woman comes running up to me, and she sort of looked familiar, and it was somebody, I also teach astronomy in the West Coast School, which is our adults coming back to school to complete their degrees. And she said, oh, I'm so glad I saw you. She said, oh, I just loved your course. She said, it just, it just was so fantastic. It brought me and my, grandcha my grandchild together. And we go out and we look at the stars every night. And she's going on and on and on. So I know you can do that. <laughs> okay. Um, and I think that's the important piece, is, is to make them go ahead and say, so what else is going on? Also with the grading, um, the seven labs are the same thing. All the grades are the same. The weighting is the same. The thing that I changed was rather than having on campus, I have a midterm and a final and uh, three quizzes. What they wanted to do with the blended course was actually have the final exam on campus. That was really, really important to them last year. And so I had the final exam, and then I put together five quizzes. I did this over 10 weeks during the summertime. And so I figured touching bases with them about every two weeks with an online quiz. What I tried to do with this was structure quiz questions. You know, if I'm doing a quiz in the classroom, I'll ask the traditional kinds of questions. I tried to put together quiz questions that they couldn't Google, okay? Something that they had to look at a star chart, that they had to analyze something, uh, kind of pull things together and synthesize. So that took more time than I had thought about, because otherwise I figured this is just stupid. They're just going to go ahead and figure out the facts and Google them. Um, the labs turned out to be interesting, and I'll talk about those in a minute. What we do for the labs in, on campus is use two comp computer programs. One is Starry Night Pro, and there's a set of labs that I do for that. They, did, they wouldn't have access to that, but there's another program, which is Stellarium, which is a free download, and I could do the, the, same, program, the same labs that I did on Starry Night Pro on campus. I tweaked them a little bit, and they downloaded Stellarium on their computers and did them that way. Now, I didn't want them doing them alone because I think the building, the community here and the learning community is really important. So um, what I wound up doing was assigning them to lab partners. They could have a choice if they wanted, if they knew somebody in the class, otherwise we just assigned them. And then what they did, we used, when they came to the first class uh, before the course started, we, program, we set them up with the college's web conferencing system, and we actually had them test it. We put them at two ends of the corridor, and one set of partners here and one over there, they tested it back and forth. So the idea was that one partner could, they could set up a time, they could do this on their own, they just had to coordinate it with their partner, and what they had to do then was both of them signed into the web conferencing, 
the one person brought up the screen from the computer program from Gettysburg, and then they talked about it, they worked on it together, and solved the problems together. So except for the fact that they weren't near each other, uh, that really worked rather well. Then those were the, the uh, so I did that for all of them. Uh, I talked about the Starry Night Pro, the Clea Labs are the ones from Gettysburg. But I wanted them to have some sense of community. The other thing that I did was I actually assigned them some study sessions and some study questions. And a couple of times throughout the semester, they actually had to go on web conferencing and do the questions with a partner. So again, I, I really worked at trying to keep them together. Uh, they had to do, I think I talked about some of this, um, they also had to do the observation. They also had a choice. If they lived near a planetarium, an observatory, get a lecture, whatever, that was part of it. At the end, um, I just gave them a very long survey. I pulled up a couple of questions that I thought might be interesting. Uh, I asked them if this was the first time they participated in a course that had an intense online component. They said yes. And clearly, since this was our first one, if they had done anything before, uh, it was maybe in, in another institution. The, would you take another class? So we had some converts here because we've got 84% yes on that one. Um, comparing this course to similar, they, they were also a lot of people that were saying, well, if it's online, it's not quite as rigorous as if it's in the classroom. So I put in some rigorous questions here. Comparing this course to similar courses I've taken on campus at Muhlenberg, it was more rigorous than 39% said that, or 50% said about the same, unable to compare about 11%. Compared to my expectations of what this class would be in a classroom-based setting, this hybrid course was more rigorous, 45% about the same, 39% and 17% said less rigorous. Uh, the online atmosphere was conducive to learning. 89% either agreed or strongly agreed with that. The online format facilitated a sense of community among students. 72% agreed or strongly agreed with that. But I really tried hard to just not have them feel like they were out there on their own. The online format assisted communication between students. They agreed with that. The online format assisted students assisted in communication between instructor and students. They definitely agreed with that. Would they recommend this course in a hybrid fashion to other students? 88% of them said yes. I just got a couple of comments here and maybe I've got a couple of questions to a couple of uh, minutes for others. But these were some things that jumped out at me as I was, um, I was looking at these. Uh, one of the students said, it was really great to be able to take a Muhlenberg course at home for the summer. Since I lived too far from school to be able to commute, I would have had to take a course outside of Muhlenberg for the summer. It was really nice to be able to take a course right through my own school with all the online tools I already use, because we use Blackboard on campus, and with people and teachers that I'm familiar with. So 95% of our students live on campus, so most of them you know, are remote and would not be taking a summer course um, if it weren't for this. They typically take it someplace else and then transfer it in. One student said, I would recommend this course to another student because it was a great learning experience where you learn both the content and more about yourself. You improve your schedule planning and organization as a result of doing the work on your own. It was great. When I, when I did the first class for the students, um, what I, I said to them, because these are non-science majors, and I said, now, to succeed in this, succeeding in this course has absolutely nothing to do with whether you have science background or not. It has absolutely nothing to do with whether you have math background or not. The most important thing for this course is time management. <laughs> and so it was really, you know, this is sort of what they're getting at here. It's like, okay, I've really got to take some responsibility for this. It was great to be able to participate in the summer internship program and take the course at the same time. If more courses like this were available, it would help students to be able to work full time in the summer and take a course as well. The flexibility just always turns out to be really important. Um, the flexibility of my time and saving the commuter time, it was a less stressful way of taking a course if one keeps up on the assignment, time management again. I do not feel that any learning was sacrificed in this format. And I think this, yes, that was the end. A um, couple of things came up that were really kind of interesting. Uh, they like the sense of connectedness. 
And the other thing that came up is that some of the, the students in the summertime are really a mix of our daytime students as well as the adults coming back to school. So there, were, there was an interesting dynamic there. During the school year, the you know, traditional age students come to class in the, in, during the day, and the adult students come to class after work in the evening. Here they were mixed. And so you had people who had never worked with other kinds of uh, age groups uh, fitting into this as well. Um, and that didn't seem to matter. The other thing that I thought was really important to me is they, somebody said this in one of the other sessions today that I, I was uh, attending, but the idea that I wasn't there lecturing at them all the time, they really set, tended to take on some leadership within the course. You know, a couple of, a week or so into the course, I get an email from one of my students in New Jersey, and she said, I'm just finding such great resources out there and she said, can I post them online? So I went into Blackboard, you know, and put a, a post, a, a discussion board up there and send everybody an email and said, you know, if you're finding things, because what I was putting up was not only some little mini lectures, but a lot of the typical physics uh, simulations that are out there, um, a lot of the, the small lectures that, that um, I found on YouTube, college professors that have them available. Um, so they really had a lot of resources, but they were finding fun things and they wanted to take the leadership and share them. And I don't think that kind of thing typically has happened in my class. They said that that's my responsibility, but because I wasn't there, they really took on that. They jumped into that. So I will leave it at that. We have a few minutes for questions now. Uh, yes. How many students you have? Pardon? How many students you have? Um, I had 20. How's that compared to other online courses that you've done through other? You mean number wise? Um, the ones I do for the American Museum of Natural History are, are about 20 if I have them in the 30s, but I get a TA if I have 30s. The grad school ones at Columbia, I cap at 35. What do you think um, your school is going to think about your experiment? Are they going to support more? Or are they going to go? Yeah, in fact, we this summer, um, actually, somebody who's our new digital learning uh, person was going to present a couple of things um, today as well. But because our session got moved, she had to, to leave earlier. Uh, but yes, actually, we've got a new digital learning person on campus. Um, I think there's four or five either blended or totally online classes this summer. Um, and because some of those are totally online, it says to me that people have gotten away from the paranoia about they've got to take the exams in front of me, they've got to do this on campus, so there's a little bit of lessening of that, so I think that's a good sign. So they have moved away from requiring the final exams? Yeah, campus. yeah. How did that work for you if a lot of them were home? Well, most of them... Um, a large percentage of our population comes from the tri-state area, so it's here in New Jersey, um, New York. So we did the uh, we did the two classes from ninth on a Saturday, 9:30 to 3. So most of them either had friends that lived in Allentown and they could stay overnight, or they literally drove in in the morning and they could make it home at night. So that was our expense. Now this semester, this summer, I've got people from Maine who are going to come in. I've got a person from California who says, I can't come in, so I'm actually web conferencing our, our classroom meeting. And before she left campus, we set her up with all the web conferencing software and everything. So as long as you plan ahead, you can get around it. Thank you.